We began planning for an anticipated surge of 300% of our normal hospital capacity. Fortunately, uh, as the pandemic progressed, uh, we, we did not see that surge of patients. And instead, the expression of the pandemic in Ohio has largely manifested itself in congregate living environments. That challenged us to think differently about how to prepare and how to respond. The first building was uh, reactive by nature. There was an issue, we heard about it, we responded to it, we helped them. But very quickly, um, we learned that we needed to be proactive and prepared for the next one. We put together this playbook, which was really a pre-planning and management guide for outbreaks. And when we had an outbreak in a Geauga facility, one of our teammates took it upon himself to proactively engage this facility, run them through our playbook, and look for ways that he could help them to manage this particular outbreak. And from there, our intercept team was born. It was overwhelming. Uh, the emotions were overwhelming. Staff were exhausted. We had two residents that passed overnight and um, we didn't have enough staff to sit by them. I remember going into the administrator's office and asking for help. And the next, within the next day, I had university there. Simple things to hold their hand. We had an asymptomatic patient come in here. Once we identified that the individual did have COVID, we started to see symptoms amongst others. And it went from one to two to three to like seven, and then seven to like 31 overnight. We were struggling to provide the basic needs for these residents. I distinctly remember a conversation that I had with Jonathan Segu. I said, we need some help here. After three hours of doing a tabletop exercise and then doing a situational analysis where these, uh, where the team of acute care practitioners had walked through our building, they gave us, they gave us order, they gave us structure, they gave us a plan to begin to execute. They really helped us to be able to think right. Quickly, we had staff members in here. I recall giving them a list of things that I needed just to provide the basic care for our residents. And by that evening, I had those things. And it just continued from there. We had all the resources that they needed in the moment when they needed it. So we were able to go over there and provide not only the nursing staff, but also infection control education. We're able to provide guidance on how they should set up their units with the COVID positive and COVID negative area, help them with their workflow, help them to get a good understanding of how we can partner with the doctors and the transfer center. So if they had patients that were sick, they didn't have to come through our ED, we could direct admit them into the hospital. It helped uh, almost make them into a remote hospital uh, because they had the equipment and the monitoring and the resources. In 72 hours we saw uh, them go from a point of being afraid uh, to being in control of the situation. As we came through that into recovery phase it was probably the highlight of the last four months when we got the email that finally came through that said we were officially recovered, the last person is off isolation. I could easily say this would have been a much different story if University Hospitals didn't help. When we think about the number of facilities that in some way, shape, or form we were involved with, the number's over 100. What we were able to do for all of those patients in all of those congregate living facilities, I know we saved lives. I know we prevented suffering. UH learned and reinforced its mission of to heal, to teach, to discover. I would add one more, to serve. We were there to serve each other and our communities. 